Pittsburgh's fabled North Side. It's the Night Talk 6th Anniversary Party with Jimmy Cran, Randy Bauman, Alan Cox, Congressman Mike Doyle, Jim Roddy, Tom Murphy, Sophie Maslow, and all of Pittsburgh's major muckety mucks. Now live from the Penn Brewery, here's John McIntyre. Thank you very much, announcer boy. I assume we're live and in color from high atop the Penn Brewery, where the beer is flowing and the Pittsburgh Muckety Mucks are damn near dead, or at least pretty darn drunk. Ladies and gentlemen, we offer you tonight a top ten list at the beginning of the Night Talk sixth year anniversary party. The top ten things that I, your Night Talk host, John McIntyre, and the Q Creek Miners have in common. Number ten, held up by the lovely and talented handwriting analyst, Michelle Dressbold. Both the Q Creek Miners and myself have really bad lighting. Number nine, held up by criminal defense attorney and the man responsible for the criminals who are going to break into your house tonight, Jimmy Ecker. Both work in a dark, dank pit. Number eight, held up by the Coxman Allen Cox of WXDX FM Teenage Heartthrob. Both myself and the miners like to get tied up with several other men in dark locations for long periods of time. Number seven, by Bobby Del Greco, son of the pirate, great and also a criminal defense attorney responsible for criminals on the street. Both myself and the miners are talking, but due to technical difficulties, nobody can hear us. Number six, Debbie Norrell, the Pittsburgh Courier. What do I have in common with the Q Creek Miners? Well, to put one lousy phone call through is a major freaking miracle. Number five, held up by the coolest African American in town. He's a freaking retarded disaster. I have this in common with the Q Creek Miners. After every disaster, the people who run the place are nowhere to be found. Number four, Jimmy Crenn with Jim and Randy and the DVE Morning Show Pittsburgh Icon. What do I have in common with the Q Creek Miners? The first thing we want when we get out of the pit is a pinch of chew and a case of beer. Woo! Number three, held up by Lamont Jones, fashion critic for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. What do I have in common with the Q Creek Miners? We're always looking to recruit some fresh new miners. Number two, held up by Tom Pastorius, the man who got an incredible government subsidy and turned it into the best damn brewery in these United States, the Penn Brewery. What do I have in common with the Q Creek Miners? Every disaster makes us wonder anew why the hell we took this insane gig in the first place. And number one, held up by Halo in Chief Johnny Angel. What do I have in common with the Q Creek Miners? It's always incredibly flattering when Bush comes looking for us. Yes, as you may know, the President of these United States of America, the President Select, the man who stole the election unfairly and just plain wrongly, was here in Pittsburgh, PA today. Will he show up at the party? Oh, I doubt it. But stay tuned to find out. The Night Talk Anniversary Party continues in a moment. Stay with us. Night Talk is sponsored by the legal offices of Aug Cordes. Hey, I'm... live at the logo of the Penn Brewery, the Penn Pilsner Brewing Company. If we say it often enough, they'll give us free beer all night. Penn Brewery, Penn Brewery, Penn Brewery. Back live on the north side in this historic building. John McIntyre in the sixth anniversary of the Night Talk Show. I'll be with you numbskulls in just a moment. Let's just walk through the crowd and witness all of the incredible luminaries. Some of them are famous. Some of them I have absolutely no idea who they are. This man, I know who he is. This man, I'm going to learn who he is. But this man here, I believe, is running for Congress, aren't you? Yes, I am. John, how are you? And wait a minute, before I get to this man, this man is a congressman already, and it's his freaking birthday. Congressman Mike Doyle, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. This is the uh, 20th anniversary of my 29th birthday today, John. Oh, you're pushing 50 now. Not yet. You look damn good for somebody who's even older than me, and I'm uh, I'm really old. I you're turned 45 like two days ago, so you and I are Leo. So I'm older than you are then, is that Apparently right? Apparently so. Are you going to sing happy birthday to me? Hell no. <laughs> this is uh, Jack Maycheck. How you doing, John? And you're running for Congress yes, again? Yes, I am. Tim Murphy. And uh, Tim Murphy is here, as a matter of fact. Yes, we got to get you guys together, and maybe you can duke it out later. Well, maybe verbally. So you guys are both Democrats. Uh, do you want to take the Republicans and uh, maybe bring them out back and beat the crap out of them? Yeah. Well, I think we're going to do that at the ballot box this year with the news, and uh, we represent uh, the change you know, in the economy that the, the people need but, this but year. The Republicans, the thing about them is they got all the money. You know, Not like all of it. That's why we have Mike here. Maybe we have one of those cage matches, you know. Can you set a cage up back there? I want some Luna looks darn good yet. <laughs> Doesn't he, though? Put my money on I want some nude mud wrestling. in, though. Luch is rep Luch, by the way, the legendary aide of Congressman Mike Doyle, known as Luch. Hey, happy A political six. henchman extraordinaire. Happy six. Have you right. been henching a lot of men uh, lately much, for the Congressman? As much as possible. Good for you. All right, you don't mind if I keep moving, do you? Keep going. Great to see all of you guys. Happy freaking birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Craig Kwasinski. 
of the mayor's office, the mayor's press secretary. How the hell are you, sir? I'm good, John. How are you doing? This fine gentleman standing City next to you. Councilman Jim Monson. I knew that. The he was on the show. Man. He's been on one time. The rodeo man. How are you? All right. So you went down to a stinging defeat, uh, Councilman Monson. Seven to two. Yeah. But it's your first uh, big defeat, and there's plenty of more battles to come. That's that's absolutely right. If you like, we can, we can do a little rodeo here. Woo! But he did it with class. Yes, he, he did, did it with class. Yes, he did. It was very, very tasteful. Have you got uh, posters of animal activists on your uh, door at home that you like throw darts at or tomatoes at or anything? No, no, not at all. I, they have, uh, they have uh, their rights, and I, I respect their points of view. Are you married or single? I'm married. But you're single. Absolutely. Are there any uh, chicks here worth picking up tonight? Uh, I just walked in the door, so I'm still looking. Hey, what about this woman with the orange hair? Hey, you! This guy's single over here. Are you interested? Pardon me? This guy's single over here. Are you thinking maybe you can hook up? Oh, I never turned down anybody. Yeah, I heard that. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's keep moving and see who else there is. Very, very good to see both of you people. Who is that man there? Oh, I know who he is. Mike Doyle again. Ladies and gentlemen, city councilman extraordinaire. I don't mean to interrupt you. Bob O'Connor. How are you, John? Okay, how are you doing? You. Great. Fantastic. I'm here with Bruno San Martino. What else is there, you know? What, are, are, you guys, are you guys dating now? No, we're going to arm wrestle later, you know? Are you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about some nude mud wrestling? I can't hear you. Nude mud wrestling? Nude mud wrestling. Yes, a few of the ladies will judge them. I can't uh, do that stuff. You know? So, uh... I'll watch like this, John. You know? What are you, you were running for lieutenant governor for a while. Are you running for anything or just going to hang out no, here? No, no, we're just doing a good job, working hard, and uh, see what happens. All right, sir, so we'll keep... Would you seat. stay here? We'll bother you later. Would you stay here? We'll bother you later? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Okay. I'll be here see you later. Thank you, sir. Party again. I feel like there's an echo in here, don't you? Nobody can hear a word I'm saying, and I can't hear a word I'm saying. This is Mark Bursick hey, of Point doing? Park College. How you doing? He knows all about the presidential scandals. I have something for you. Look at this. George, can you get the rust? Look at the rust. Whoa. 40 years old, because I know this is like your hero. Johnson, LBJ, the Great Society, the great society Social the worst Security, Medicare. president of all time, John. There was a president who knew how to have sex and not get caught. LBJ. He loves this guy. He deserves You're really giving this to me? Yeah, it's yours. You are the man. It's probably actually worth some money. Happy anniversary. Thank you, sir. Jeff Haybay, yeah, state representative. Aren't you? Are you running for something else? No, nope. state representative again. Okay, I understand the Democrats are have some evil guy that's going to try to defeat you. Oh, they always do. They always do. But the last time I ran, I won the Democratic nomination. Well, that's and right, I, I remember won by the highest amount of votes in Pennsylvania. So, so you're going to kick this guy's butt this time? We're going to do it. We're going to do it. One of the last parties I had, I remember you were pinching Melissa Hart's butt, and I noticed she didn't show up this year. <laughs> Did you notice that? She's not here. Didn't do it this year. But I noticed on your show the other night, you told every politician to cut their nose hairs. And yeah. I did tonight, just for you. Good for you. You, know, and I, you were actually one of the people, one of the prime suspects I was talking about. That's right. If I could say hi to my wife in McGee Hospital, we just had our first little one. Congratulations. Saturday. Your wife have a lot of nose hair? She's watching tonight. Okay, cool. Well, listen, a happy hey, congratulations on that, sir. Thank you very much. Thank let's, you. let's bother uh, handwriting uh, analyst Michelle Dressbold. Who looks groovy, baby. Yeah. You want to get a look at the whole groovy outfit here? Huh? That looks, you look, it looks you. like sort of an Austin Powers kind of a period thing. Yeah. Which is very in style right now. Right, right. Well, I was trying to, I really was going to wear something else, but it was too tight. Really? Well, I mean, were you, I mean, did you try it on before you I came? I tried it on, and, and uh, no, I tried it on like a month ago, and it fit. <laughs> it didn't fit tonight. Now, isn't that a bummer when that happens? A little bit. It was just a little tight. Uh, Michelle, have you been an analyzing anybody's handwriting recently? Should I get you some samples from around the room, or you don't want to work tonight? I'll uh, work tonight. I have, I've actually been very busy. I noticed Tony, uh, Norman was all over you like a cheap suit right away. Oh, well, Column Tony Norman? Yeah, well, you oh, know. He's hot for you. You yeah. can tell, can't you? Come on. Uh, I need my column in the Post Gazette. <laughs> but yeah, no, I've actually been really busy. I've had two murder trials, handwriting. Yeah, I've noticed that. You've actually been asking you to analyze more handwriting. And have you helped to put anybody away? Yes. I have. Is the food here any good? Um, the carrots are very good. Yeah. The potato pancakes are good. Are you the vegetarian kind of chick? Kind of the chick, yeah. I did cheat and have a hamburger for dinner tonight, <laughs> but I am a vegetarian when I'm not cheating. All right, well, will you come back on the show again soon? Sure, Thank sure. you very much. Okay. You're looking great. Oh, thank you. you got to be the best. George, don't you think she's the best dressed person so far? Mo, would you say she's the best, nicest looking woman so far? Except for Incredible Night Talk associate producer Amy Marshall. Hi. Hello, everybody. How Happy are you? Happy anniversary. I'm good. How are you? I'm just Andy. This is one of the, this is the main behind-the-scenes woman who makes everything happen. Uh, sees to it that we have all our ducks in a row. Are quack, all the ducks quack. in a row? Quack, 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 quack. Yes, all my ducks in a row. George Bush is stopping by in the next segment, I 
right here. Is that right, George W. Pretzel boy? here. He said he's going to turn you into a Republican. Can I ask you something? What is this little birdie birdie we got going here? It's a fake tattoo. <laughs> it's a fake tattoo? No, it's real. All right. And what, uh, it's not coming up. And that's that little thing from Snoopy. Woodstock. That, that is with Wow, man. Yes, hi, Grandma. So is that like a 60s statement or a more of a no, Snoopy thing? No, that's more of a free statement. Okay. Snoopy statement. Is not it, a 60s. The 60s sucked, man. <laughs> is it time to go to break? It, it's been time to go to break. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Three back in a moment with more conversations with incredible Pittsburgh luminaries on the Night Talk 6th Anniversary Show. Woodstock, man. <laughs> The official transportation provider of Night Talk is Pittsburgh Limousine. Whether it's for business or a special night on the town, Pittsburgh Limousine is the one clear choice in transportation. should be. What the heck am I doing here? No, it's a great party. Sixth again. anniversary show. That's fabulous. You're, you've made it. Yeah, so we've made it. Mike, <laughs> Mike Lang told me when I, uh, over a bar at the Park House uh, several years ago, that if I could make it here five years, then I'd, be, it. I'd be stuck for Plus life. Plus one, you're looking good. You're bringing people together in this town. Stronger. Better. Just like my boy today, thanking those miners for rescuing themselves down there. Doing that. Thing there. Good. Okay. Uh, is Sorry. there any, I, No, that's good. I was actually thinking, trying to do the president just then, but I was too busy laughing I still got to work on the actual president. Now, some, of, son. Now, yeah. some of your better imitations also include uh, the famous sports announcer that we always do. Keith Jackson. Yes. Oh, Nelly, you've got a ball game filled with, and there's a man with a crazy sports coat over there. <laughs> what a wild, wild party it is. And you do a little Carson, too, which I think is pretty good. Oh. That is, uh, Ed, uh, this is yes. many wild stuff. Yes. Uh, uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. you'll be here all week, right? To, I, will, I will be here waitress. all week, and, uh, you know, because of the emotion and the incredible story that's going on here, I feel compelled to hug you. Oh, I feel like it's, two Channel 4 reporters, just, emotional over the Q Creek the mine coverage. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Uh, well done, sir. Good to Enjoy see you. Your party. Good to see Enjoy you. your we'll newscast. All right, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, fires, murders, uh, rapes, and other disasters from David Johnson immediately following this program. Oh, my God. It's mo two more Pittsburgh icons. It's Sophie Masloff and James Ecker. Sophie, uh, who first suggested uh, PNC Park before anybody else did. Jimmy, who makes sure we have plenty of criminals to populate the outfield. It's very kind of you. It's very kind of you. Yes, sir. Why so would you say such a thing? He's a civic-minded citizen. Has he, oh, has he really done a lot of good for the community? Absolutely. He has no other motive. Another thing, you were mad at that Bill Peduto guy, the councilman, for suggesting that we have one regional government because it's not original. Well, uh, it was suggested at the Last Supper. And, every, <laughs> and everybody after that has made that suggestion, and it's never going to happen. Does he think he was original? I, I have no idea. These kids today, you don't know what they're drinking, you know what I'm saying? Oh, He's still the best mayor we've ever had. You think even better than Tommy the Madcap Leprechaun? Better than anybody. Better than anybody we've ever had. She really is. All right. Mutual Admiration Society. Jimmy's the best lawyer I know. Well, why don't you uh, Why don't you run for mayor again? I mean, I for crying out loud, Bobby O almost beat the Madcap Leprechaun the last time. Well, I don't know whether I could or not, but it's you too You blow tough. him out of the water. I think. Oh, thank yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, well, listen, you guys have anything else to say to the fine human beings at Pittsburgh? Thank you for having us. I appreciate well, it's it. It's very, very nice kind. to have you here, sir. Thank you. You're, you're still the best. I mean, I am so proud that there are so many dangerous people out there circulating among us. You're a beautiful Pittsburgh. thing. Thank you. All right. And Sophie, would you like to say anything to the people of Pittsburgh? No, except it's a great city, and I'm happy to be part of it. And you're always, part, you're always here because it's the social event of the season. No question about it. Thank you, ma'am. Two Pittsburgh yeah. legends, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute. i got to get this guy. He's Mark Barish. He's the station manager for PCNC. 
Hi, John. How the hell are you? I'm doing This is my great. boss. Uh, and I'm proud of it, too. Proud to be the boss of this man. These are always horrible things because I have to suck up to him or something. I can't be rude to him like everybody else. Say something nice. Go ahead. That's not fair. <laughs> no, you I'll tell you something nice. Would you consider doing your uh, Colonel uh, Klinka impression for us? Werner Klimper? Uh, well, actually, I, I don't. I guess not. All right. I don't do Klink so much. I do Major Hochstetter. Oh, okay. Can you do a little Major Hochstetter from Hogan's Heroes? What is this man doing here? What is this man doing here? Exactly. Major Hochstetter, Mark Barish, ladies and gentlemen. And I rule with an iron fist that way. Yes, yes you do. But I want to just say that, that it's been a pleasure having John here for six years. Who would have thought? I, I, after one year, we thought it was going to go down the tubes. <laughs> but no, it's six years, and we're darn proud of it. And you've done a great job. Only you can get these kinds of guests at a show. And we're real proud of it. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Great to see you. Mark Barish, ladies and gentlemen, station manager of PCNC. What do you say we, uh, no, I'll throw to a break and then we'll get the, uh, we're going to meet a talking bobblehead doll from the Pittsburgh Pirates when we come back on the Night Talk 6th Anniversary Show. Stay with us. How are you today? Okay, how you doing? Night Talk is sponsored in part by The Advisors, your retirement and estate planning specialists. Pennsylvania polka with incredible accordionist Joe Malloy. He hasn't stopped smiling since 1957. Some sort of a Botox thing. I don't really quite understand it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a pirate pierogi. How the hell are you, pierogi? And also an actual representative from the Pittsburgh Pirates, Pat O'Connell, with one of the hottest items this year to come out later in the season. It's the Pokey Reese bobblehead doll. It's the Pokey Reese bobblehead doll whose head bobbles. It's the Pokey Reese bobblehead doll who smiles while his head bobbles and turns around while smiling and having a bobbling head. Pat, yes. I know... Uh, Man, it must be hot in there. That's what I'm thinking. I know that uh, a lot of the bobblehead dolls have been big, but I, for some reason there seems to be more excitement around this one. And when, when's this one coming out at the stadium? September 21st, a Saturday night against the Cubs. Everyone in attendance, everyone who comes that has a ticket will be guaranteed a Pokey Reese bobblehead doll. Um, it's one of five in the season. We have one the next day, but Pokey Reese is special because it was added because he's such a fan favorite for his remarkable defense and a two-time Gold Glove winner. He's just the fan Fans love good defense here, a la, you know, a la Bill Mazeroski at second base. So they adopted Pokey Reese as their own, too. Aren't you afraid that if, like, Sammy hits too many home runs, everybody will throw their Pokey Reese doublehead doll at Sosa while he's crossing the plate? I seriously hope not. I, they don't tend to throw that stuff, though, do they? If no, anything. they do not. No, they, they, they very, very good at collectible. And, uh, we we get, expect our pirate pitchers to keep Sammy in check this time. Can you get me into those $185 McClatchy seats? I will work on that. Will you work on that, yes, please? Thank you very much. Very nice Thank to you. meet you, sir. Thank nice you. job. Ladies and gentlemen, County Executive Jim Roddy is here. He's not talking to me. Hello, sir. Hi, John. How are you? How are you? Okay, how are you doing? Fabulous. Uh, but I'm going to get better. Did you say? <laughs> did you spend the day with the president? I spent a lot of time with the president. What did he have to say? He said to tell you hello. He was he wanted to come to the party, but he had to uh, he had to go back to Kenny Bunkport. Was he able to complete a sentence or actually say anything intelligent? Uh, actually, he said a lot of good things today, and we raised a million dollars, which is you very good for Mike Fisher, didn't you? Yes, we did. That's no small potatoes, is it? I mean, no, is that's, that, that's not deal. typical, is it? Yeah. yeah. That's about as that's most money ever raised in Pittsburgh. You you gave it like a quarter of a million yourself just for fun? Uh, not quite that, but I, I did make a contribution. Hey, do you care about? Isn't there some regatta coming up do you care about that or are you you washed your hands of that oh no I'm, I'm still involved it's a great great event and it's going to be the best year ever what, what do you think uh, how the hell Mike is, is Mike Fisher going to catch up with fast Eddie Rendell yes how is he going to do that uh, well you know most most of the Republican governors that have been elected have been behind about this percentage point at this point of the campaign. Well, even Rendell himself was probably behind this much at that That's point right. in the primary. That's you know right. I mean? yeah, so it doesn't mean a lot. We'll, about uh, October, we'll begin to be serious. Hey, you know, I had Councilman Peduto on last week, and he said, you know what we ought to have is one government in Allegheny County get rid of the mayor and the city council and have the county executive be king. Does that sound like, good to you? I like that. <laughs> I like that. 
Well, I just came back from England meeting with the with the uh, Lord Mayors, yeah. and so maybe I could be Lord Chief Executive. Well, Lord, uh, thanks for coming. Thank you. Come out of here. Nice job, you. though. Really good to see you. County Executive Jim Roddy, ladies and gentlemen. Bill Mushi, investigative reporter for the Post Gazette, and music critic Ed Masley of the Post Gazette. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey, congratulations. How much congratulations. Free, free beer have you consumed thus far? Well, we've been working hard at it because we know it's for you, and we want to make sure you celebrate the no, night. No, it's because you know it runs out soon. That's right. I'm not it, aware of that. Have you ripped it? Well, you better drink up, pal. Are, are you aware, uh, or have you ripped any uh, musicians, a new uh, a-hole, as they say? I try not to do that. No? I, I, that's a rumor. I don't do Wait that. Wait a minute. I saw you had a tepid, uh, lukewarm review. You didn't like Springsteen's The Rising that much. What? And you can't not like him now. He's on Koppel. He's on Letterman. He's the new freaking American hero, and you can't say bad things about him. I had to hold uh, Joker Shecky off of it, but uh, just a few minutes ago, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm kidding. I said, I said good things about the songs. I just didn't like... You said wait. overproduced, overproduced. I heard you. He didn't produce it. Someone else did. Well, I'm going to move on, ladies and gentlemen, because you look like you're three you sheets to the wind. Or at least two and a half sheets. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, from WQED and Pittsburgh Magazine, Chris Fletcher. Hello, John. How are you tonight? Okay, how you doing? Good, good. Ladies and gentlemen, from the WDV Morning Show, Jimmy Crent. Johnny, happy anniversary, buddy. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the crankiest damn midget uh, west of the Mississippi, I guess it'd be east of the Mississippi, uh, PR genius and Night Talk political analyst, Mean Bill Green. Hi, John. How the hell are you? I'm well. How are you, John? Okay. Happy 6th anniversary, John. Don't you think his hair is just a little too dark? That's got to be a dye job. He's always denied it. I think it's all natural, Johnny. It's all natural. Bill takes care of himself, unlike, you know, unlike me. Oh, and it's like Reagan. It's like shoe polish, don't you think? I'm just a little concerned about this whole topic of hair right now. <laughs> it's not something I can add to. Uh, Jimmy, you guys are still kicking butt in the rating. Thank you. Killing people. Yeah, thank God, you know, and uh, DB's been doing great. And uh, they, thanks to Pittsburgh Magazine, put me on the cover in May. Thank you very much. Yeah, when the hell am I going to be on the cover? Thanks, thanks for bringing that up, Jim. <laughs> All right, uh, well, I'm done with you guys, but I'll come back. Cover next month. Oh, you are on the cover next you month? You didn't know that. Like a midget month or something? That's not very nice. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Garfinkel of AT&T Cable. We don't get on the air unless this guy does the pushes buttons at the cable company. And I'm glad to be here. So, uh, and you've complained in past years because we haven't invited you. And but this year, you, I see, remedied that oversight, and I'm so thrilled to be here. Yes, well, we're actually rather sorry we invited you. I, I'll bet you are. Mostly because of the tie. I actually like the tie a lot. In fact, your tie would probably go better with my outfit than my tie. That's not surprising somehow. So are you going to continue to keep us on the cable system, or I are you going to threaten to rip us off? I'm going to keep you on as long as possible. Dan, it's mighty nice. Would you like anything? You know, I'm paying 90 bucks a month for digital cable, for crying out loud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just another sucker for AT&T Cable. Thank you, sir. Melanie Malloy, incredible comedian. I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt. That's all right. How are you, John? The last time I saw you had long hair, and Bill Scott, also doing, incredible right? comedian. How are you doing, John? Hey, how are you doing? Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, are John. you guys playing uh, the Funny Bone in the comedy clubs, or what the hell are you doing? Yeah, I'll be there. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be there all this week. I'll be at the Funny Bone all this week and uh, working for uh, Big Jeff over here. Wait a minute. Jeff is the owner of the Funny Bone. How you doing, dude? Yeah, I'm sitting here, I swear to God, going, who's that guy? Who's that guy? You weren't wearing a hat the last time. Happy, happy anniversary. Six years, man. And Gene Collier wanted me to ask you, how do you do it without paying anybody? No, I actually guess without paying anybody, man. He, well, he shows up. <laughs> he shows up. We have absolutely man. nothing else to do. We go to him. Yes, there's no cameraman in the place. Like being on a satellite, like a spaceship out in space. You know, it's weird. the funniest comedians you have? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, Melanie's very good. She's got a great body too. <laughs> Do you get a lot of chicks He's owning a, nice a comedy body. club? Too. He's got a great body. All right, if you had to pick one right now to bring it out back and have your way with him, who would you choose? I'd pick Melanie. You wouldn't want both of them? No. No, I wouldn't want both of them. People would, don't you? I can't believe she looks good with this haircut. It's unbelievable. You know how a lot of women they say they'll do that and then they do it and it's a big mistake. I couldn't shave my head. I would look like yeah. I would look like a dork. Yeah. And she she pulls it off. It's yeah. great. It's very good for the time of year right now. It's very hot outside. This worked out. This worked out this weekend at the Dave Matthews show when I was camping, sweating. This was nice. Well, you look nice.
nice and sweaty tonight, I must say. Sweating in here, John. <laughs> no, all right. I'm going to go move on to these losers, if you don't mind. I can't interview winners all night. He's a good man. I understand Gene Collier and Randy Bauman of WDB. Gene of the Post Gazette. Johnny, how are you? Complaining that we're not paying you. I was. That's yeah. What these That's losers true. over here said. Well, no. I mean, I want to make this announcement. I mean, I'm so flattered and humbled to be the first person on Night Talk to be paid. So if you would give me that five bucks right before I. Leave. All right. I suppose I can. Uh, what is the going rate here? Five bucks. That would be great. You know, you get paid when you do the DVE morning show. I do not get paid when I do the DVE well, morning show. Well, take that up with that man. One. How come I don't get paid when I do the DVE morning show? Um, well, you're not as good as him. <laughs> and that's what it boils down to. Yeah, but couldn't I get half the pay? I'm at least half as good, aren't I? Well, you know, that's not there's to no me. There's no half the pay. No, no there's no, there's no, minimum there's, standard. there's no half the pay and there's no half to pay, unfortunately. But I have to tell you, it's an honor to be here on your sixth anniversary, Johnny. Uh, you know, what a, what a, uh, a tribute uh, to your dedication and talent uh, that you've had the show on the air for six years and nobody's uh, nobody watches it ever. Ladies and gentlemen, continue to get it on the air. Randy Bauman, tremendous. Who hasn't you were washed to his hair since 1975. 932. Bastard, 932. It's time to take a break. More arrogant bastards on the sixth anniversary show in a moment. Stay with us. Mixing the music, it's the weird night talk music and the even weirder polka, mu polka music. And by the way, only 44 days till Oktoberfest here at the Penn Brewery, where everybody comes to get drunk out of their minds. And that's what uh, life's all about, isn't it? Let's continue the uh, night talk anniversary party hit parade. Here's the man who hasn't washed his hair since 1975. Here's the people we already talked to, I think. Oh, this is the man I'm looking for. Go! Alan <laughs> Cox, on, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I was just reading the, uh, the new copy of... I was just reading Horal Magazine, which is apparently is a spin on Pittsburgh social scene. Yeah, baby. Yeah, uh, uh, Sheila Hyland. Sheila Hyland. Uh, Patrice King Brown. Right. Peggy name? Finnegan. Peggy Finnegan, begin again. Sally, and Sally Wiggin. Wiggin. Doesn't Sally look a little hungover there? She does. It, uh, the great part is, if, if Sally ever loses her job, the headline of the PG can be Wiggin out. <laughs> Not that I would ever wish ill will on any of my media compatriots. No, but, I know. love them all. Yeah. If I when I get fired, it'll say you know Cox gone. I don't know. Congratulations Thank on another you, year, buddy. So being a teenage heartthrob, is it hard to fend off all the women? Uh, it's harder to fend off the guys. Is that right? Since you outed me on last Friday's show. Well, I think uh, that's like a to joke, go both by ways, the way. Uh, no, way. no, I uh, no. It's it's not hard to fend off the young women. It's, do you know who that is standing next to you? I do. Right oh, next to me? Yeah. The short hair? Yeah. It's Val Porter from the DV oh, Morning Oh, it's Val Porter from the DV hey, Morning Val Show. Porter from the DV Morning Show. Oh. I couldn't remember. Happy you don't have your Thank you very no. much. I'm going incognito this evening. So uh, working with Jimmy and Randy here, uh, especially Randy who's always like token up. <laughs> uh, is that a big pain in the butt? No, I love it. It's great. Can you get a <laughs> shot of Randy token yeah. up there, George? <laughs> token up. Uh, is there anything wrong with, uh, I mean, so there's no sexual no. harassment of any kind? Not that I can talk about in public. <laughs> uh, this guy's right down the hall, though, right? Right next door. Yeah. Every day. Right next uh, door. At the at WXDX FM. No sexual harassment with him either? Well, and again, nothing I None that she can discuss on record. All right, well, I guess there's just no point in continuing this conversation. You'd have to agree. Yeah, if you were looking for the sexual harassment dirt. Yeah. Or is it harassment? I'm not sure. I, I, I prefer to say harassment because then it contains her ass. Look at Cone Man. I, I think you and I could take him. Well, you want to let's go over there yeah, and push absolutely. him around. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm reversing course. I can't believe it. The man who's going to save us all from the traffic headaches in the universe, Cone Man, is here. Hi, how are you? Okay, Good Cone Man, how are you? Good, thank you. Pleasure to be here. I appreciate you inviting us. It's a big ass chest you got there, Cone Man. Thank you, thank you. It's better than a big chest ass. Now, is it. Now, is it uh, easy to pick up chicks with uh, this muscular build? Well, I'd, I'd like to say I have the time for that kind of thing, but uh, yeah. my, my duties keep me pretty busy, but I must say, chicks dig the code. Now, <laughs> let's, for, let's get a typical chick right over here right now. Here's Minette Seed of WQED. Minette, do you find the Cone Man attractive? I used to when I knew him before he was Cone Man. Oh, did you know him in the pre-Cone Man days? He was hot before he was Cone Man. We go way back. Now, is it the size of the cone or how you use it? Good. And you would agree. I don't have anything to say. Do you have any traffic problems? 
problems that are solved by the cone man? Have you looked on his website? I tend to ride the bus when I have a traffic problem. We're, we're all heroes when we ride public transportation. You know, you do that really well. Did that thank take you. a while? Thank you. I, I might get a gig out of this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to move on to, uh, oh my God, look, it's President George W. Pretzel Boy showing up for us. Mr. President, how are you, sir? You're looking a lot taller than uh, when I see you on television. Hey, do you have anything to say? Because you're a complete uh, idiot and a complete boob and a, and a, and a mental midget and, and a maniacal moron. Thank you very much. I knew it. I knew he was an idiot. And I, and I, ladies and gentlemen, the fastest rising rock and roll group in the city of Pittsburgh and in western Pennsylvania and indeed the northeast. It's called Color Fest. This is the lead singer. His name's Jason. This is the drummer. His name's Keith. This is the bass player. I forgot his name. This is Joey. He's one of their groupies. She's one of their groupies. <laughs> Who's that? That's Ray Stein, the keyboard player. Hey, the Ray Stein, the keyboard. So how does it feel being the uh, leaders of the fastest rising uh, rock and roll group in the history of the region? We're really not permitted to talk about it. I'm sorry. Is, this, is he the leader of the band and so he gets all the chicks? Yes, that's true. Uh, how is it being a groupie for Color Fest? It's pretty fun. <laughs> is it really? Are any of these guys in, in particular, you know, the, the, your favorite? Well, this guy. Kind of like the keyboard guy? Yeah, he's he pretty knows good. how to tickle the ivories? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, well, gentlemen, and do you have anything to say? Well, I'm not actually with these boys. I'm just celebrating my induction in the Hall of Fame uh, last year. You heard year. there was free beer here? And yes. And, oh, Bill uh, Mazeroski. Yeah. I get it, yeah. <laughs> I'm not as dumb as I look. Thank you, guys. Nice to see you. Hey, Danny Anarato, the fiscal watchdog of the county of Allegheny, Arf Arf. Another successful anniversary party. Johnny Angel joins us as well. How the hell are you? North side. Doing great. Yeah, we're all Northsiders. All Northsiders, right here. And, uh, as I recall, you guys have been on the show uh, probably as many times or more frequently than anybody else in the history of the show. <laughs> Both of you. It's probably right. Thing, right. That's right. You got <laughs> That's because we're the only two that will come at the last minute when you say, I'm empty, come on up. <laughs> I started to say, why do you keep coming on the show? Well, no, that doesn't that. Why do you keep coming on the show? It's close. It's very close to home. How about you? It's true. Yeah. And it's you're a, bored and lonely, pathetic lives, you have nothing to do. And a good view of the city from your office. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Well, thanks a lot for that sincere, heartfelt uh, compliment. Ladies and gentlemen, the woman who single-handedly uh, drove Cyril Weck's political career into the ground, former campaign manager, and now anti-death penalty advocate, Diana Wentz. You're just never going to let it go, are you, John? I tend to stick with the same, whatever works. You know, if i got to try and do formula, I just stick with it. Yeah, you wouldn't want to get too creative and actually use the brain now, would you? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> That's typical you. You came all the way here from New Orleans just to be on the show. Just to give you crap. Just to give you crap. Hey, I did indeed. What do you suppose this intense conversation is going on right here between uh, State Senator Jake Costa and some loser? What do you think? You know what they're talking about? I think they're worrying about Steelers parking tickets, is I think is what it's all about, actually. It looks like we got some major league lobbying on going, doesn't it? It's hacking. It's, it's hacking at its best. And we should get the camera out so they can go on about their hackdom. Do you have any idea what they're talking about? I think it's parking tickets as well. Really? That's the most important thing here tonight. All right. Well, I understand. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Pastorius of the Penn Brewery. John, Cheers, thank sir. Thank you. Cheers, Pittsburgh. Have you had a lot of your own free beer? Are you sufficiently oh, proud? what? I, I, just, I believe in sampling my own product. It's called quality control. We make only the best beer, and I'm here to prove it. You know, uh, despite all the uh, hype and the BS, it actually is quite good. Well, thank you very much. There's no BS or hype about it. As I can, I, can, I consider that other beer, uh, who shall remain nameless, that's sort of a local beer like Puddle Water. Well, that's another beer. It's a different taste for a different customer. We're making real beer for real German uh, connoisseurs. I understand you send your children to Germany and they get to get drunk a lot in order to sample no, beer. No, they're not getting research. No, they're doing research. They're both studying beer in Munich right now, learning about real German beer. So they're going to be able to bring some real German secrets back to our Penn Brewery in Pittsburgh. Well, listen, congratulations on another incredible uh, hosting of this anniversary party and Thank your you wonderfully successful business. Thank you very much. We're happy to have you here, and we look forward to having you back for Oktoberfest the last two weekends in September. The best beer is right here at the Penn Brewery. Drink, drink, drink. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Thor Tolo. He's unemployed. He's looking for work. I, I this is questions. the Thor Tolo Unemployment Telethon. I have two questions, John. How you doing? Okay, how you doing? And do you need your lawn mowed? <laughs> that, that's, that's all I got tonight. By the way, this is the lovely Shello Tolo. Oh, yeah. Shelly Tolo. Thor's oh, lovely wife. We brought our dog, Rooney. Rooney. Yeah. You have a new dog, Rooney? Right there. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, now why did you decide it? Is it after, named after Dan Rooney or Art Rooney, nope. or does it matter? Oh, no, no. Andy Rooney. Andy Rooney. Andy Rooney. Andy Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> is like purple or is that just bad photography? Our dog is seven months old today. It also does a great impersonation of me for the next 13 weeks. Shelly, do you have, uh, hang on. You mean doing yeah. nothing, laying around the yard? Yeah, it is, right. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's me, John, right there. Now, we just got back, first full day back from New York. We were there for uh, a few days, about a weekend. In all sir, but you're yeah. being seduced by major broadcast entities throughout well, this land of ours. But that isn't true of the last few days. John, that would be true of the last 10 years. All right, well, yeah, <laughs> I got to go then and be this little man. John, yes. You're the best talent in the market and obviously on this station. I mean that. Well, please continue. Uh, well, yes, thank you. Although, but, I don't know how much that's saying. We'll, we'll be back I mean, right after station. this. No, we won't. We're still here. Here's Justin Miller, world's youngest chef. Hey, John, how are you? How are you? Young. Remember when that French TV crew came to the station and filmed me interviewing you as part of a documentary they were doing on you for France? Yeah, I have uh -huh. a tape of that. You have a tape of that to present me? Yes. Why, thank you. You're very so you're the shortest person here tonight. How's that uh, look for you? <laughs> it's okay. How old are you? Twelve. Are you, are, so are you interested in girls yet? No. All right. Well, I don't know if I want to continue that line of questioning, but nice to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, there must be somebody I haven't... Oh, Tim Stevens, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and you're his lovely wife, aren't you? Chairman of the NAACP in He's trying Pittsburgh. to run off the game. <laughs> so what's going on, then? Well, last time we were... Uh, last time we had you on a phone call for a little baby, so we were a little nervous. Oh, that's right. That's right. I came Just, down to integrate the show last year. Last year, I don't know if you knew that, there, was, there wasn't a, an African-American in the place, and he burst yeah, in. I was watching. I had to leave my pregnant wife and get down there and fix this. <laughs> That's why this year we uh, we got plenty of them. You got plenty. Oh yeah, uh, Look, there's two right there. <laughs> hey, you're, you're an African American, aren't you? Yes, yes I am. So uh -huh. do you, do you yeah. like me and Tim? You know you're cool with all that, right? Yeah, we love you. We love you. Good. All right. Good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. Keep up the good work. I got to take a commercial break. Absolutely. Make some money. This uh, Night Talk sixth anniversary party partially brought to you by the NAACP That's exactly and all our friends who we love very much. Back in a moment. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's the incredible accordion man, who, as we mentioned earlier, has not stopped smiling since the late 50s and has reinforced that uh, ridiculous grin in his face with tons of Botox ever since the uh, there was a horrible operation. I don't even want to talk about it. Jan Ray is here, ladies and gentlemen, and Vince Gaskeb, county councilman. County council. uh, Jan, how are you? Good. County councilwoman. Good to see you. You're looking awfully sprightly in your uh, lovely outfit. You look great, too, there in your orchestra. You think she, isn't she the nicest looking uh, politician uh, in the place? Yes, she is. In fact, Tom Flaherty just said that we were both good Republicans. Tom Flaherty said that about us two. Well, I think that's an insult. I don't think you're supposed to be happy about that. <laughs> Only two. Well, we'll take them. We'll take them when we can get them. An abortion and uh, minors. And were you there? Uh, I was President there. Bush? I was there. Yes. And was he a complete uh, inarticulate boob? No, he was wonderful. He was an articulate boob. He was just great. You would have been proud. Well, it's good to see you both, Bobby O. Good, good to see you hanging in here. Great to be here. Here we are with the best Democrats and Republicans in town. Yeah. The lovely Eileen, Tom Flaherty's assistant. Hello. Candace says hello. Looking a lot like Jackie Kennedy still. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, thank you very much. Excuse me. Oh, I know who I'm looking for. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Bruno San Martino, the legendary wrestler. Hey, John, I want you to meet my dream team. Oh, yeah, Bobby 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 Greco, Jimmy, Jimmy. Jimmy. These are my guys. I've never, listened. I've never been in any trouble now. But if I ever do, that's why I have them both on retainers. John, that's not true. My... We're his bodyguards. <laughs> Bruno's getting up there in years. He needs to be well, a, a little true. muscle around him, and we're here to help him out. Well, that's true. That's true. But anyway, I'm protecting acting myself in all which way. Rudy, you're still the most popular man in the place. Oh, my goodness. Easy Thank you. But I'm with the two heavyweights right now. I've talked to him for five minutes, and he's signed ten autographs. Is, is there a, he's our idol. Anybody you'd like to uh, do a little mud wrestling with uh, before we get out of here, Bruno? No, 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 no. Those days are behind me. Right now, I just want to go on with the rest of my life and hang out with uh, heavyweights like this. How about you versus Bill Green? <laughs> there, I might have a chance. There, I think I feel a little confident. I think I could do it. All right, well, good to see you, man. Thanks a lot good for coming. Good to see you. Good to see you. We'll see you next hey, time. You're we do talking the show. to me. How about these guys? Did I take I all talked to time? them already. We, we got our air time. Oh, okay. That's all anybody cares about is how much air time they get. They don't care about actually being at the party or celebrating this thing. Here's Tom Flaherty, city controller, frequent night talk hey, guest. John, congratulations. congratulations.
Yeah. Hey, I haven't seen the Shark Boy here tonight. Have you? I thought he was going to be here. Well, I, I'm sure he's on Air Force One, on the Shark Boy out in Texas. But uh, or perhaps he hasn't recovered from the last free for all. Well, you were making fun of Elsie Hillman, and you really got his goat because that's his. Know, you know, he's, know. he's the adopted son of Elsie. I know, and she is a saint. She does a lot of good things, but when she gets in the political arena, fair game. But he doesn't understand. Yeah, that, but you, you just know. did that to get his goat. I didn't did. Really have, I and, did. and it worked. I did, and how about on the break? At least he stayed on the show. Yeah, he didn't walk I, off didn't like Bill Green. Yeah. yeah, rip off the... All right, uh, yeah, get Gino and Emilio. T nice to see you, hey, sir. good seeing you, I got John. time running out. Great. Have a free beer. Right. Have several. Don't, don't drive afterwards. Congratulations. Hartley, this is the man who advocates no circumcision. That's right. Take so are, are you telling everybody now to stop circumcising? Are, take, you, are you lobbying at the party? Take the whole baby home. <laughs> How about this uh, Justin? I'm not sure he circumcised. You go find out. I don't out. know. I don't ask. I just give education to parents and let them make the right decision. Keep it up, sir. Arlen Specter's uh, staff member. His hey, name is Doug Saltzman, senior Arlen Specter. Congratulations. Staffer. Happy anniversary. Thank you. i got something to present to you, John, here. Got a cigar in your I'm, pocket? I'm happy you're just glad to see me. My, my wife and I just had our third baby girl the other day, Julia. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm completely outnumbered at home. All right, completely sir. Completely outnumbered. I'm running out Time rapidly. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm glad the Senator does Gino and Emilio from the Azazu Salon are here. Here's Gino. Hey, John. What's going on, man? How you doing? Sir, here's the lovely happy Melissa happy. from the Azazu Salon. Pleasure, pleasure. Happy anniversary. And here, who is this man? Brian. That's Brian. Brian Johnson. Brian from the FF. Nice to see you. That's right. That's Matthew. Hey, man. What's going on, Matthew? How much? How are you? Emilio. Emilio, get over here. Now, time is running out. Time is running out. Now, how many stylish people do you see here that don't need a makeover? Do you I'll see you some what, major what, makeover? Half, can't have. Definitely. Lots of major makeovers. Lots of major right makeovers. Right hey, Marshall, what's going on? Brother hey, hi. Who's the ugliest person here who needs to be fixed? Uh, oh. Gino. <laughs> Half the people here really need to come down to his outfit. Marshall's uh, tied pants first. Um, let's, let's start. You like Marshall's tied pants? I know. Is that the highlight of the evening thus far? I can't wait. I can't wait till the next anniversary, seventh anniversary, because you know what? This guy gets better looking every anniversary. Can't wait. Uh, this is Brian. Hey, how, how you doing? We're Azazu people. Yes. yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. You talked them to talk in unison. That's right. That is tremendous. <laughs> All right. We, we had a sign up list. I'm rapidly running out of time. I have to move along. These people get mad at me if I don't put them on. You know what I'm saying? Hi. Hey, Emilio, good to see you. Hi there. You know, I got to get him too. Ladies and gentlemen, you know who this is? This is Steve Drobeck. He's running for Congress against Melissa Hi, Hart. Yes. Missy didn't show up tonight. I guess you scared her off. No, she didn't. And thank you for inviting me. Good to have you. Nice hair. Here's Hi. Sheriff Pete DeFazio and Judge Bob Zavonic and Night Talk you, Frequent sir? Attorney Guy Tony Mariani. How are you? How are you? So you rest anybody tonight, Sheriff? No, we're, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm taking, I'm listening to the, how, the, how the judging is up in the Shaler Township area is going. If I get busted for DUI in Shaler, are you going to fix it for me? Oh, I don't fix anything. Oh. Well, we'll get it serious and we'll consider. What the hell did I invite him for? I'll represent you, but unlike appearing on your show, it won't be for free. Tony, <laughs> Tony's been in front. He knows how it goes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, good to You're see you guys. Trouble. It's Richard Florida, the CMU policy wonk who's, who's facing the CMU wonk. backlash. David, we're having a wonk festival. And and, uh, are you it. wonking anybody here tonight? No, no wonking tonight. You have to wonk Manette before the evening's over? Are you wonking? I'm wonking we'll on out of here. Let's take a commercial break back in a moment for a brief second. It. Richard Florida, the policy wonk, says, Everything's groovy. Stay with us. Back live at the Penn Brewery for the My Talk 6th anniversary part of the remaining moments. Dan Simpson, foreign editor of the PG. Jim O'Brien, prolific sports author, author of many books about everybody who has anything to do with local sports. Welcome. Well, it's nice to be here. Yeah, and uh, this is a pretty exciting group you put together here. It's one hell of a jacket you got there, Dan. Uh, well, I got it at the at the morgue actually, but okay, good. Uh, you know, but uh, did Cyril it's rip right. it off of somebody yeah, and give it to yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah. Jim O'Brien. Yeah, I got Bob Francis. Jim, how about that? Dan Rudy landing that plane belly up. I was very impressed. You know, every year on this show, I bring in my new book that's going to be out in September. I'd be happy to plug it. Oh, Quick, we're, it's, time's running out. Yeah, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Steelers yeah. forever. Yeah. Jim. O'Brien's 547th book. It's always great, but don't get me in any trouble tonight with Bill Cow or anybody else. Please. It's not my fault you were talking about all those Cordell rumors way back when. No, I have to defend him because uh, I spoke to Bill and I spoke to Kay 
They both tell me there was nothing to those stories you're talking about. I'm not talking about You were talking about them. No, you get me into trouble again, John. Jim O'Brien, ladies and gentlemen, time is rapidly running out. I think we've gotten literally everybody in the place. Is uh, Keith Seawald yes. representing Mike Crossy? I'm representing Why couldn't the bum show up his own self? He's on vacation. He's a worthless weenie, I'm telling you. And uh, this woman never wants to be on. And these people we've already had on, and I think we're just about out of time. I think that's about it. Gene Collier, we have 10 seconds. Have anything to say? 10 seconds? Yes. No, Johnny. Ladies and gentlemen, the incredibly articulate morons who come on my show, and I bid you farewell. Have a great evening, everybody. Ha, ha, ha.